Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is the US Futures Weekly Chart Analysis for the week ending 31st of May 2024. First chart is the US dollar index futures. You can see price is attempting to consolidate on top of this 104 level, which we've been talking about for what seems like forever. But price has broken above that level here and price is coming back now and it's testing this level for strength from above. This week, price once again traded inside the three-week range. Here's the three-week bar and here's its range here. And it's comfortably traded inside that bar's range. It's attempting to absorb supply and the volume suggests that supply is not overwhelming and it's probably doing a pretty good job to absorb that supply. And it may well be setting up for a bit of a push higher or at least an attempt to push higher. There's no great amount of supply being drawn out. So barring an event that draws out supply to the downside, I will suggest this market's going to go sideways or perhaps make an attempt to push higher. Any mini S&P, this is S&P 500 index futures and price still hasn't pushed above the recent highs, which are here. And that's with that little gap up in the background. And back here is where price started pushing higher, higher. Here's a gap over this level here. And a push up. And I questioned it at the time that this was concerning after a good run higher, a gap up to new highs where price does not move higher very quickly in response, suggests that this market is a little vulnerable. And you can see that volumes have reduced over the last month. Price is pushing up to this level again, this important level, the previous highs. And it's doing so on reduced volumes or below average volumes. And generally you'll need some sort of push, some sort of effort to get you above that level because there's generally going to be some resistance there. Now this week, the market's pulled back in sort of a mini shakeout sort of shape. The spread's a little bit wide for a normal test for supply. It's not a particularly wide bar but it's wider than you would expect for an orthodox test for supply. So I'll call this a mini shakeout. Now, not much supply was drawn out. Below average volume suggests that selling pressure was not overwhelming. And that does leave the market in position to push higher, but I expect it will probably take an increased effort to push higher here. And we'll see if the market has got that force or effort in it. If not, I expect we go sideways because selling pressure is light. If supply was to be drawn out for whatever reason, the market would be vulnerable to increased supply and probably push lower, perhaps come back and test this level down here around the 5,000. That's not what it looks like at the moment, but if supply was drawn out for some reason, this market doesn't look like it has a great ability to absorb increased supply at this point in time. So it is a little vulnerable. 10 year no futures. And this market is very similar in some respects. Here's the important level here. The market broke below it, albeit with a mid bar close, which suggested that some buying support was present and it wasn't a clear breakdown bar. And that was then shown over the next couple of weeks with a reluctance to move lower. The market could have really accelerated lower here, but it didn't do so. It reluctantly moved lower and then recovered back to this level we're looking at. But over the last month, price has not been able to even challenge it seriously. There was a half-hearted attempt to challenge it here, but it wasn't really serious challenge. Look at the volume on that week. It was low, it was below average. It wasn't a serious challenge to that level. 
it was a half-hearted attempt to push above it. Then there was a test for supply the following week within the range of the previous bar and a little mini shakeout this week, similar in some respects to the E-mini. That probably suggests this market will attempt to push back up to this important level this week, but whether there's enough force or effort in the market to really issue a challenge to it is yet to be seen. So I expect this will prove to be a mini shakeout and that probably allow the market to push up a little next week, at least early next week. And then we'll see how much supply is drawn out in response. Copper price futures. Copper price futures really spiked higher three weeks ago. Uh, just to move back a little bit, here was where the market was consolidating and the initial breakout, a two-week consolidation in response, and then a push up to the highs of the range. And this bar here was where the market absorbed the highs of the range on increased volume. Following that, there was a period of bullish absorption through here, and then this really serious spike higher on pretty high volume. Last week, price pulled back a little more deeply than you'd be happy with. Generally, when you get a big widespread up bar like this, you're unsure on whether it's full of supply or whether the market really is going to push higher and continue moving higher. I always look at the 50% line on the widespread up bar to judge just how strong the demand in the market is. And if the market is able to consolidate up in the top half of the bar, it's generally stronger than weaker. Even more so if it can consolidate up in the top quarter or so of the bar. But this bar has pulled right back near the lows of this widespread up bar, which suggests that selling pressure has been drawn out and the market may not be as strong as it initially appeared. Now, always look at the lows of the widespread up bar as a guide to how strong or weak the market is. Now, you can see this week, the market's attempted to push higher from the previous close, and the low volume down here suggests that that push higher was not broadly supported in the market, and that's then triggered further selling pressure, probably from short-term traders, to come in. And that's forced price to stretch lower in order to find enough demand for the sellers to sell into. That's caused price to close below the lows of the widespread up bar, which does leave it quite vulnerable. A further down bar in response would really be weak. The most likely response here, considering that volume was quite low this week, that suggests selling pressure was actually quite low and the market was only stretching lower to find enough demand to satisfy the sellers. So you'll probably find there'll be a response higher this week. Just how strong that response is, is yet to be seen. But there's probably likely to be at least an attempt to push higher and recover and use that lows of the widespread up bar as a guide as to whether the market really can recover here or whether there'll be a weak attempt to push higher and then price will continue lower in response. Gold price futures are effectively consolidating sideways. You've got the market breaking out here, little period of consolidation in response, another push higher, supply was drawn out there, We'll mark this as the highs of the range and this as the lows of the range and prices consolidating within that level. Spread was much reduced this week. There was an attempt to push higher off the previous close, but that wasn't broadly supported. But different to copper, there wasn't a great deal of selling pressure in the market and the market has a very narrow spread and has closed just slightly below the previous bars low. Now, that's not great, but it's not a clear push below the previous bars low. 
you may find in response, at least early in the week, a little test for supply like this to see how much supply or selling pressure is in the market. And if it's found to be low, you probably find a response higher. If supply is drawn out, then I would expect the market to continue trading sideways to down, depending on how much supply is actually drawn out. So the first two days next week are probably going to be important. If not much supply is drawn out of the market, I expect price will go sideways to up. And your sideways range is between 2300 and 2400 That's probably where the market is going to trade in the meantime. Silver price futures, similar in some respects to gold, although it has stretched higher than gold. Gold's down here. And silver is well above that level. And price is attempting to consolidate right up high in the range, which is a good sign and a positive sign. The poor close this week leaves the market a little bit vulnerable. We just have to see how the market deals with that. So from the previous close, the market's attempted to push higher to close down near the previous bar's low, which isn't particularly helpful. But we'll just see how the market deals with that early next week. Be aware that the market could test for supply. If gold is doing that, silver probably will too. That'll look something like that early in the week. You'll just have to see how much supply is actually drawn out. If supply is drawn out, you would expect price to continue lower or sideways at best. And if not much supply is drawn out, perhaps an attempt to push higher in response. But the supply early next week for copper, gold and silver is probably going to be important for the future direction, in the near term at least. Like crude price futures, you can see where the market found some support down here. The price broke out over a three-week period. The next higher level comes through here. And to move up to that level, some bullish absorption developed through there. Price pushed up above that level, but it wasn't able to maintain its position. And it broke down on this bar. And since then, price has been attempting to consolidate adjacent to this period of bullish absorption in the background. And you've got the important level there that goes right through at 75. So the market continues to trade sort of within this range between 81 and 75. I've mentioned this level many times in the past. It seems like it's the sweet spot for the market. Now, price did close poorly this week down near the lows of the week and the lows of the range. That leaves the market a little vulnerable. That said, volume was low this week, so there wasn't much selling pressure and prices just drifted lower on reduced supply and a lack of demand to some degree rather than price being sold into strongly. That suggests this market is probably going to continue sideways within this range between roughly 75 and 81. This is Euro US dollar currency futures and they've been stalled out for a little bit as well. The important level sort of comes through there. Price broke down on this bar, recovered, pushed higher. It's been limited to some degree by the highs of this bar, which was uh, increased volume. The market's traded inside this bar's range for the last two weeks. Now, spread was a little wider and volume was higher this week. That suggests that there is supply being drawn out and you may be vulnerable to the downside, at least early next week. You can see the previous bar had a narrower spread on reduced volume. And that suggests that supply wasn't being drawn out or it wasn't overwhelming. In response, price has attempted to move higher from the previous bar's close and volume is higher. Price has been forced lower for a mid-bar close. So there is some support in the market, 
I feel with the wider spread and the increased volume, supply is being drawn out. And when supply is being drawn out, generally markets will move lower initially in response and challenge the sellers. And that's probably what's going to happen here. It also suggests that the US dollar may move higher in response because this market's going to pull down lower, at least initially. The British pound usually trades something similar to the euro, so we see if it's saying the same thing. There's the same line we marked before. There's the highs of that higher volume down bar. You can see this market pushed above it the previous week. Spread has increased this week, increased and attempted to move higher. Volume was about the same, certainly not higher like in the euro. This market appears to be making some attempt to consolidate here. The close was below mid bar, just slightly. So that also suggests the market may test for supply early next week, something like that, and just see how much supply is drawn out. This market's marginally stronger than the euro at the moment, but not particularly stronger, just marginally stronger. Aussie dollar currency futures. And the breakdown line was there. Here was the breakdown bars over a three-week period. Now, three weeks ago, prices broke back above that level. And it pulled back with a pretty widespread disappointingly in this market, which shows it is still vulnerable. It wasn't a consolidation right up high in the range like you'd hoped for. It pulled back quite deeply. This week, price has traded within the previous bars range, the previous two bars range, really, and volume was low. So selling pressure wasn't overwhelming. It was relatively low and quite manageable, which is probably why the markets closed slightly higher for the week. This market looks like it could push higher if there was any weakness in the US dollar. If not, most likely going sideways. Selling pressure doesn't appear to be strong, but this market's not looking strong either. The wide pullback in response to that previous up bar two weeks ago suggests this market isn't particularly strong. If it really was strong, it would have consolidated right up here, but it pulled back quite deeply. And this week, price has remained slightly below that breakdown line. So the market isn't particularly strong. Sideways is the most likely in response, particularly if the US dollar remains relatively subdued. It will trade sideways as well. If the US dollar moves higher, then this market will likely test for supply in response, similar to the other two currency markets. Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures spent the week trading as an inside bar this week, inside this bar's range, with a reduced spread on slightly higher volume, but average volume overall. Now, just so you know where we are, here's the recent highs. This level here is the previous all-time high, and this level here is the highs of that range. This was the secondary breakdown line after price broke down below this level. It was a slight recovery, and this level is where price broke down a second time. There was an attempt to consolidate through here. So this is a supply zone in the past, and price eventually pushed down to these levels where the market reaccumulated. Now, this week, price has traded with a narrower spread inside the previous bar's range, on a slight increase in volume. That suggests that supply is being drawn out. That means there is selling pressure in the market, but the narrow spread shows you that the market is comfortably able to absorb it, or it was at least this week. And in response to supply, you'll generally see a little test for supply. That's a minor challenge to the sellers to come out and finish their work. Now, if supply is found to be low when price tests for supply, and I'm saying this is in the first day or so next week, if supply is found to be low, if the sellers are done, price will probably push up in response. 
If supply continues to be drawn out, you'll see price pull back a little more deeply to further challenge those sellers. So that's where we are this week. This week's bar is suggesting the market is comfortably able to absorb the selling pressure in the market, at least up till this stage. And it generally won't just reverse and push higher. What will generally happen is price will move sideways and repeatedly test the strength of the market and how much supply will be drawn out before there's an attempt to push higher if supply is found to be low. Just back to the US dollar quickly to finish up. This 104 level has been an important level for quite some time. Price traded this week within the three week range, this bar's range. And it looks actually as though there may be an attempt to push higher in response. The consolidation is on top of this range that we've been looking at. It doesn't look vulnerable. And although volume is slightly below average, it's not well below average. So there is supply being drawn out and the market appears really comfortably able to absorb it. That suggests the market may make an attempt to push higher if trading conditions allow, or if not, the market just moves sideways, probably on top of this 104 level. Okay, thanks for your time. Thanks for tuning in. See you again next week. See ya.